Hi, this is Carl Leopson at the University of Arizona. This is SERP 590 Single Case Research Design, and I'm going to lead you through a really quick introduction to multiple baseline design logic. Remember to read about it in your textbook. Um, they do a great job of explaining in a lot more detail. But let's go through the basics. A lot of you are designing interventions, and, and we've talked so far really just about individuals. Right? So you're thinking about a proposal with an individual. And that isn't usually, if you can't withdraw the intervention, that's going to be an A-B design. So we talked about that in a previous week, <clears throat> that if you can't withdraw the intervention, at that point, you've just got an A-B design. And you really only have one demonstration of experimental effect, and that's great. For clinical settings, it's great to show parents. Um, it's great to show your supervisor. But it's not a good demonstration of experimental effect. What you want to show experimental effect is three demonstrations of control. There's just one here. It goes from baseline to an improvement in intervention. So what are you going to do to show that you can get another experimental effect. Well, multiple baseline is a really simple way to go about that. And what it says is, OK, I'll just do it again. So in the first case, this study was conducted with Holly. But then they also have another student or client, Jill. And they collect baseline data at the same time and even after they start intervention with Holly, they continue to collect baseline data with Jill. And they show another experimental effect with Jill once they implement. So they're saying, look, I implemented with Holly. Then I waited. And after I implemented with Holly, well, Jill didn't improve. So it's not moon phases. It's not something else that's going on in the therapeutic setting for everybody. It's specific to my intervention that when I implemented it with Jill, it worked. And if you want to show a third, sure, you can just add another student. And I'm sitting in the way here, um, but this third student's name is Kim. And it demonstrates that we have another situation in which we kept the third student in baseline and collected data their behavior didn't improve or their behavior didn't change until we implemented the intervention. It's really pretty simple logic and it's another one that's really used often in, in uh, single case research and especially when you can't withdraw the intervention. So let's look at some other things that are common to multiple baseline designs. One of them is the concurrent baselines. So these baselines run along together at the same time. Okay, um, Data collection happening at the same time with these other students. And that's called a concurrent baseline. So you've started all these people on the same day. All these clients start with data collection on the same day and they continue throughout. You can do this non-concurrently. It's kind of a hot topic right now in multiple baseline design. So you could, you could do the intervention with Holly, and you could say, oh, I, that worked really well. I'm going to do it again with Jill. Um, and then you could say, well, that worked well, too. I think I'll go and do it with Holly and not do them and start them at the same time um, and then come and stack them up later like this. But you have to tell people that, that they were non-concurrent. That's becoming more and more accepted in the field and in research, as a matter of fact. Another really important thing to look at is, is that in this situation, when you're doing them concurrently, you're doing time-lagged entry into intervention, which means the first student or the first client, Holly, enters into intervention while the other two are not in intervention. Okay, so it's called something that's referred to as time-lagged 
entry into intervention. Another important consideration in multiple baseline designs is that they can be across participants, settings, or behaviors. So in this case, we're looking at um, an intervention that's applied across participants. And I didn't talk about this initially, but this particular study was about using within school consultation to help teachers learn to make more specific praise statements. So you can see that the dependent variable is specific praise statements per minute. And we have three different participants. So, so in the case for some of you, for your proposals and your research questions, you could add participants to your study in order to show multiple treatment effects or multiple experimental effects, multiple experimental effects that show control. Um, another way to do this is across settings. And this graph is from one of my early research pieces in which we created a function-based intervention and we wanted to show that we could create interventions to increase on-task behavior for students and that intervention could be transported across settings and have the same effect across the school and other settings and we've done this multiple times. Um, in this case it was across social studies and then we continued to collect on-task behavior in math and the math behavior for on test did not improve until we implemented the intervention. Pretty simple logic, right? You could do this across classrooms. You could do it across clinical settings. You could do, I know some of you are looking at homeschool and community. You could do a multiple baseline design that showed <clears throat> that your intervention was effective in the home, and then you implemented it at school, and then you implemented it within the community. Another but more tricky thing to do in multiple baseline designs is to, to work across behaviors with a single client. Okay? So in this case, they're looking at multiple reading comprehension behaviors. Statement, interfer statement inference, using facts, and making analogies. Okay? Um, and they demonstrated that their intervention works when they apply it to each of these skills related to comprehension. And they applied them separately. It's a tricky business, um, and there are things that you have to be really careful about. The big thing to be careful about, and I'm sure you can, you can guess this, is that your behaviors have to be functionally similar, but also functionally independent. Remember those terms? Um, that's an important thing for BCBAs to, to keep in mind, and they're important terms for you to learn. Um, functionally similar behaviors means, um, like in this case, they're looking at three behaviors that are part of comprehension. They're not looking at walking using a spoon and reading, okay? They're looking at behaviors that are functionally similar, but they also have to be looking at functionally independent behaviors. You don't want to pick three behaviors, and when you implement on the first one, the student says, oh, this is going to work for other things I do, I'll just apply this new skill across all these other things and I'll be a happier person. Um, great for them, hallelujah, but it ruins your study. It doesn't allow you to show experimental control separately, right? Um, you're going to get some interference across, okay? So you've got to consider really carefully if you're going to do this across behaviors considering how the intervention promotes change in your behavior. Is it just a, are you just 
using some kind of uh, strong reinforcement technique and you can apply it to some functionally similar types of behaviors that the students use, uh, needs to learn. Um, you have to consider whether or not it's going to promote change across your behaviors before intervention with the next behavior or will it only create changes in the behavior when you implement. Okay, so functionally similar, functionally independent. Read about it in the book. They do a really good job of explaining it and providing you with lots of examples. So let's sum this all up. Multiple baseline designs allow you to show experimental effect without withdrawal. Okay, so you don't have to withdraw the intervention. It uses this pretty simple repeated A-B logic to demonstrate functional changes or experimental effects. Generally, we're looking at concurrent baselines, meaning you start everybody at the same time and you start taking data on the dependent variable at the same time for everybody. And then you have time lagged entry into intervention so that one client is held in baseline while one goes into intervention, you show that there's an effect in intervention with the client and then the other one, there's no change because you haven't implemented with them yet. Simple logic. And then you can implement across participants, settings, or behaviors, but watch out implementing across behaviors to make sure you have behaviors that are functionally similar, but functionally independent. Now, we're also going to be watching a video um, that I'm going to make in just a bit that's about, um, about what you can do that's a little different in your baselines so that students don't actually learn your skill that you're teaching while they're in baseline. We'll get to that and I'll post that video along with this one. Okay. Take care. Read the book. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.